pidato Prabowo Subianto yang sangat mengagungkan berbahasa Inggris dan tanpa teks pada acara Mandiri Investment Forum 2024. Simak video sampai tuntas. In the context of what we saw in the video, I think all of you are more expert than me in the world of finance, investment, etc. But for me, economics, finance is actually very basic. I think the economy of a country must address the need, first of all, of the people of that country. And uh, one thing that I am convinced of in my career is that every people in every part of the world, whatever nation, whatever race, whatever religion, whatever economic and political philosophy, every people in the world desire the same basic things, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This is a common interest of humanity. And one thing that I am very convinced of, being an amateur historian, being a student of history, being a former soldier, one thing I am convinced of, there the people of all the world, especially I'm convinced my people, but I think all your peoples also, desire prosperity. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness means prosperity. Every leader of every country must aspire to achieve prosperity. So the economy, I think, must, in my opinion, refer to this basic fact. Peace and stability is the key to prosperity. In the midst of all this, in the midst of all the challenges, the, the last being the 98 economic meltdown in Asia, in East Asia, after that, our transition to a full democracy, and after that, we had the 2008 financial crisis, and after that, we had the pandemic, COVID, and we have now the geopolitical uncertainty everywhere will provide an impact on the economic situation of many countries. Indonesia still managed to weather all these challenges, and everybody must acknowledge that we have done not too bad. We still maintain growth after a pan pandemic, one of the most vibrant, I think, growth in the world. We have maintained our inflation, low, one of the lowest in the world, not bad eh, for Indonesia, and we have maintained a good, prudent economic and fiscal management. I think uh, Indonesia has a good record. We have never defaulted in our economic history. Our uh, trade balance has been positive for what, the last five years? Tremendous, but Perry, uh, terima kasih. And uh, our uh, reserves are, are very healthy, although it, it must be better in the coming years, right? We are determined to uh, maintain this trajectory. We are this uh, proven record of prudent and wise management. I think is very essential because we see in many parts of the world, for instance, inflation. And I am optimistic by talking not only with economic experts, I talk with the players. I talk with the economic players of all levels, from the top taipans, the middle, to the cooperatives, to the village traders. By the way, I was chairman of the Traditional Traders Association for many, many years. I'm still board of patron of that organization, which represent, I think, something like, what, 16,000 traditional markets. So I get input from all this, and I 
come out with, uh, with a view that I'm very bullish. I am very optimistic. Uh, what I'm saying is, if Thailand can achieve 16% tax ratio, if Malaysia can, if Vietnam can, if Cambodia can, why cannot Indonesia? That is my question to all the managers, the economic experts. Please let us, not in the sense that we have to increase taxes. No, we have to widen the, the tax, what do you call it, the tax uh, payers, right? And I think this can be done. If from 10%, we can increase to 16% like Thailand, 6% of $1,500 billion GDP. That's significant, right? $90 billion. We have now, I think, one of the lowest uh, ratio of government spending to GDP. One of the lowest in the world. Uh, the last figure was 15.5% government spending to GDP. We have the, also the lowest, I think, uh, debt to GDP ratio. I think we are now at 39%. 39%. We are well under the mandatory 3% uh, cap on our uh, lending. 3% yeah, by mandatory for our deficit towards GDP. We are now, even now, at present, it's about 2%. Projected, I think we can easily go to 2.6, 2.8%. And we will still be under this mandatory 3% ceiling, which is actually, basically, we adopted from the European Union, from the Maastricht Treaty, I think. and. Interestingly, many strong countries of the European Union do not maintain the, their own cap. I think uh, France is around 6.8% of GDP. Germany is also around 6%. Italy is around 8%. So Indonesia, not bad. So I must uh, again commend all the economic managers and fiscal managers of this government and the previous governments. So I think this tradition is very strong in our uh, the back of our mind. And that's why I uh, would like to maintain this close cooperation between the top players of industry and commerce between the bankers, financial system, the government political leaders, the middle and uh, weakest part of the economy, small enterprises, yeah, middle and small enterprises, the cooperatives, the cooperatives of the farmers, the fishermen, the traders. I think our approach is uh, collaboration, cooperation between all these economic players. We do not want a zero-sum game. We want a collaborative. Our strategy is not a zero-sum game, not winner takes all, but we want win, 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 win. That is what we want. <laughs> We are open for investment. We would like to see more investment. And in order to attract investment, as I said, I am of the opinion that we must clean up our act, improve, once again, I said, efficiency, mitigate, if possible, eliminate, but at least mitigate more and more corrupt practices, enforce the 
enforce the law, assure all investors, foreign and domestic, they will get the best protection and the best uh, the best treatment under the law. Uh, I'm convinced, basically, I'm personally convinced that uh, we can boost our growth. My own uh, estimate is within uh, the next four or five years, we can achieve 8% growth, maybe more. Yeah. We are open. Oh, this is happy, I